making tonight, you can make it however you want. You can put whatever seafood you want in seafood chowder. I'm just using lobster because my husband loves lobster. I'm using haddock because haddock is the most unbelievably flaky, delicious chowder type fish. It flakes up into the most beautiful pieces and it's delicious. And I'm using scallops and I'm using um, shrimp. shrimp. Yep. And what I get, what I do is I cut these in about two or three pieces each and I cut these in half for chowder. So that's what I'll be doing. Okay, so for a good chowder, my favorite thing to add to the chowder is these leeks. And so you want to cut off the butt of the leek, cut off the top of the leek. You only have about this much. I slice each leek in half and then I, you can do it the other way, it doesn't matter. You have to be picky about how you slice it. Um, but what I want to show you is that leeks get little pieces of dirt in here, so you really got to be prepared and go ahead and set aside time for them to be rinsed and uh, washed because they will and drain. You will need it drained before you... For a chowder it's not that big of a deal, but if you're going to be doing uh, frying up leeks you want them to be nice and dry. But I'm making this chowder, so I just wanted you to see in here, you rinse them, you let them drain, and that's how you do the leeks. The, the problem chowder. is, there's a leak in the pot. <laughs> okay, so I finished steaming off the lobster for the chowder, and this is a little hint in the pot, the little bit of steaming liquid that you used in the bottom has amazing juices from these lobster. Don't throw it away, you need to use that in your chowder. Okay, so one of the seafoods that I put in this chowder are scallops. Okay, so these I got, it's, this is chowder, so you don't need to worry. I have washed these. Normally you get, um, your best scallops to get are called dry scallops. And that means they haven't been washed or anything and they're just ready to cook and they cook much better that way. But when you're doing chowder, you have to rinse these. I mean, you get little specks of dirt. I don't know if you can see it. And it, there's nothing worse than biting down on some grit while you're eating chowder. So make sure to rinse your scallops. So you rinse them and then you cut them in little littler pieces. It's not uh, ideal to have giant pieces of scallops in your chowder when you have multiple fishes in there. So just a quick note about scallops. Okay, to start the chowder, you just get yourself a half stick or a stick of butter, however much you want, because we're going to be sauteing the vegetables um, in just a second. So get that heated up and nice and hot. Okay, so the butter is nice and heated up and we're adding one shallot, one half of an onion, small onion, and then I've got two leeks over here. I'm going to add, we're going to cook those down in some high heat. Not so they burn, but so they cook down and they're nice and caramelized. Okay, turn them off. Yeah, forgot to mention, when you're sauteing your vegetables in the pot, um, anytime you're doing any kind of stock or soup, you add your seasoning um, during this time and let it cook down with the vegetables. So I added just salt and pepper for this. I'm not doing anything crazy fancy because I'm going to be adding uh, garlic in a little bit and that will add a lot of flavor. So one thing that I've learned throughout the years is that you never use salted butter. So just so you know, this is regular unsalted butter. Um, and then you can control the salt um, content a lot more because this is just really unpredictable when you have salted butter. Um, and when I said I season this, you don't fully season it yet. I mean, I put a bunch of salt in there, but not enough that I know I'm going to ruin the dish. I saved lots of space for salt for the end when you're really going to finish seasoning it the way you like it. Okay, so I wait to add the garlic till when these vegetables are almost translucent and done cooking because um, garlic will burn fast and I love the method of a garlic press because it gets all of the flavor of the garlic in perfectly. 
you have way more um, surface area um, and when garlic oxidizes is when it um, all the surface area when it releases its flavor so that's the best Okay, so everything's cooked down. You're ready to throw another stick of butter in there. Let it cook down. Turn the temp down to low, and we're gonna make a roux. Um, and I make a roux with my vegetables that have already cooked down a little bit. Um, and I make a roux with flour. It's the best. It tastes the best. And I have to eyeball this. I'm probably gonna end up using, gosh, maybe a half cup because I have a lot of soup. I make a lot of chowder. So we might use a half cup, but I don't know yet. Um, I will see once I melt this down. Um, so what I do is I start adding it even before the butter is fully melted. If you want to add any other flavors in here, any other spices, like thyme, thyme might be really yummy in here. Um, start adding that now to the roux and that will help that'll brighten the flavors up the roux will kind of toast in here for a little while the flour toasts um, so it's just really really good um, so I see I added in there before um, the butters have been melted it's not that big of a deal it is not and I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit because we kind of lost some heat. And you see how this, all of this is cooking down the flour. And you want to cook it for, hmm, let's say at least six minutes. But I might go even longer. Because the more it toasts on low, the better it gets. It's just so good. So this stock, the roux is ready. And we're going to add the stock and you have to sift it and the only thing I have is a tea sifter but it's really important to sift it all those little chunks you see coming out that <laughs> uh, my husband shocked the lobster over the stock so we got all kinds of yummy things in there all right Perfect. I'm just throw it in there. No way, we're getting more. Oh, okay. Alright, that's that. And I guess we're gonna go like like this. Mm. Get all the good stuff in there. Now with the fingers. Ugh. Alright. Okay, so the other thing you need to do is you need to add clam juice. And you have to sift this because there is little pieces of dirt in here. There are, there are little pieces of dirt in here. <laughs> I've got an English right. All right, so straining that. And I use a tea strainer because it's super fine mesh. It's really important. Okay, so we got the stock all in there. And now this is totally preference. Totally perfect. I was gonna get corn today and put corn in here too, but I didn't. So all I have is a little bit of potato, but you do not need to put any vegetables in this at all. It's good with just seafood. So after you add the potatoes, um, you need to go ahead and pump the heat up because you're gonna be simmering this until it's tender. And as you are heating this up, it will get thicker because of the roux that you've made. Um, and but I always have on hand some cornstarch because at the very end sometimes I've just added so much liquid and the roux just wasn't enough so I thicken it up a little bit more some people don't like that but my husband likes it very thick um, and creamy so I do what I do and it tastes great it doesn't taste any different okay so at this time you could add to the pot come over here Ava see you can add to the pot more stock. I would suggest you using stock if you want more. Um, or um, you can use whipping cream. <laughs> Everyone will see this and be like, oh my gosh, this is so bad. But it is the only thing I have. I don't have any more stock. All I have is water. And the more adder, uh, water I add, um, the less flavorful it will be. So 
add whip, I had a bunch of whipping cream, you guys. Do not be afraid of it. It's very good. It makes your stuff amazing. And I'm probably going to add another, another uh, one of these. <laughs> so three of them. So this is boiling, you guys. Simmering. I might need to turn it down a little bit. But we're just waiting till the... I'm going to turn it down a tiny bit. We're waiting. And this light is awkward. I don't know if you can see it better that way. Nope, not really. Oh well. Um, sorry for the lighting issues. Um, yep, we're just waiting for these to be soft. Get soft in here. And once that's soft, we will actually turn the heat off. Put, the, put all of the seafood in it. And then put the cover on and let it sit for about 5 to 8 minutes. You don't need any heat uh, going when you're adding the seafood. The seafood just cooks so fast. Okay, so I've turned down the stock. The potatoes are done. I turned it down because I'm gonna. I don't like how thick it is. Thin it is. I want it thicker. So here I have some cornstarch. Whenever you're using cornstarch, you always do cold water and make a little. Just stir it right up. Doesn't matter how much water. Just eyeball it, guys. Not a big deal. Um, I, I always start with less cornstarch than I think I need and then I add more as I need it because there's nothing worse than thickening up something so thick it won't come out of the pot. <laughs> so here we go. Pour this in here and you always want it kind of simmering when you're adding the cornstarch because that will activate the thickening. And as it heats up it will get a little thicker not much so you just want to start really warm and it's not as thick as I want so I'm gonna add a little bit more and I'll come back later okay guys so I add a little bit more cornstarch and this is how thick I like it I like it like this I've turned down the heat and now this is a good part the fun part we're adding all of the meat this is a pound of lobster you can add as much or as different seafoods as you want. This lobster has been cooked a little under, um, steamed a little under so that it doesn't overcook. Um, and I'm turning off the heat. If you saw that, I turned off the heat. Adding the haddock. This is a pound of haddock. Actually, it looks like more. She might have given me more. This is a pound of scallops. This is a pound of shrimp. And with that, I go ahead and just give it a little stir. There we go. And you saw I didn't break up the haddock too much. I cut it up in mm, probably two th to three inch pieces. Um, just because haddock is a lovely flaky fish and it will just flake up beautiful. So the heat is off and I just add the seafood and now I'm going to put this on and I'm going to time it for six minutes and that's it. And we'll show you the, the final product when it's finished. Okay, come and look at the soup and it's done. I actually had it sit in here for eight minutes and it gently poached everything so it's all done that's what it looks like and then this is it right here it's good what does everyone else think it's really good <laughs> that's all they have to say <laughs>